I will now explain the problem candy party, easy version and hard version. Actually, there will be some fact which I will not prove. And if you want the proof, you can uh, look at it into the editorial. So in this problem, we have n people and each of them has AI candies. They do something exactly once or at most once and they do the following. They choose some power of two, they choose some other person and they give this power of two candies to this person. Also, all people are different. So actually, this is a permutation. So there is a permutation P. Uh, it is a permutation. It is like written. Sorry, I forgot something like PN maybe. Sorry, I forgot how. Ah, SN, of course. Sorry, SN. <clears throat> so the SN is the set of all permutations and actually group of all permutations. So the person it uh, they uh, have initially AI candies. They give two to the power XI candies to person P I and they get two to the power X P minus first I and this from person P minus first P inverse I. So each person gets a power of two from exactly one person and they give a power of two to exactly one person <coughs> and the goal is to get all the quantities the same so each person in the end should have the same number of candies and the question is whether it's possible to do so to solve this problem one needs to like consider several cases first of all let m be the number of candies that each person in the end possesses so in the end the number of candies is equal m to m times n but in the beginning the total number of candies is sum of all AI. Uh, I claim that these two numbers are equal and this is because the number of candies does not change <coughs> the total number of candies does not change throughout the process so these two numbers are equal and we get that m is s over n where s equals sum of i from 1 to n ai so the third, the first thing that you need to do is you need to sum all these numbers actually in long long because otherwise you will get uh, an overflow. And if S is not divisible by N, then the answer is definitely no. Not just no, but definitely no. So let's assume that it is divisible by N and you divide it and you got M. <coughs> After that, we can actually we can forget about AIs and we can instead think of differences delta AI which is AI minus M. This is what each person needs to get rid of. For example, let it be, I don't know, 58 or 56. This means that person needs to give away 56 candies. Mm -hmm. But the only way you can give candies away is you need give some power of two and you need to get back some power of two. For example, 56 is 
expressible as 64 minus 8. So you need to give 64 again to, some, to somebody else and take 8 from again somebody else. The point is, <coughs> uh, this decomposition is actually unique in case if delta ai is not zero. So if delta ai is zero, then you just need to take any power of two minus any power of two. Let's consider this later. Let's assume for now that such people do not exist. The second play, uh, case is delta ai is some number. I claim that it is a difference of powers of two in at most one way. First of all, let's consider positive numbers, because if there is only one way for positive numbers, then there is only one way for negative numbers. Okay, delta ai is a positive number. Uh, let's actually look into the binary system and let's look at power of 2. It looks like this, 1 and a lot of zeros. Let's subtract some other 1 and a lot of zeros, another power of 2. And note that since I said that delta ai is positive, then the second power of 2 is strictly less than the, than the first one. After you subtract, you get several 1s and then several zeros. And this is uh, a necessary pattern. So if you have a number, which is not several ones and then several zeros, maybe zero. So at least one one, but uh, at least zero zeros. If you do not have this pattern, then the answer is definitely no, because you just cannot express delta ai as the difference of two powers of two. How to find these two powers of 2 if it is possible to do? Uh, let it be little and let it be big. Then L is... Uh, you can find it via several GCC intrinsics. So L is a built-in pop count. Oh, not pop count, sorry. Built in C T Z count trailing zeros of uh, A delta A I. And then you can just add this number to your delta, and the big power of two is built in C T Z of delta A I plus 2 to the power of L. So you can easily find L and B, and after that you can just check that 2 to the B minus 2 to the L equals delta AI, or minus delta AI. Okay. <coughs> so assume that it never failed us, and for each number we got two powers of 2, which it is difference of. In this case, in the end, our system will be divided into several cycles. In each cycle, some person gave something to the, sec uh, to the next person. Any permutation in the world is divisible into several cycles. For example, in this case there are two people and they exchange some powers of two. What is notable is that, first of all, these cycles are actually independent. <coughs> they are actually independent. In each of them, the mean number should be m, which is s over n. And what is even more noticeable is that for example if some person gave some power of two then the next the very next person received this power of two so the number of 
uh, sends of some power of two should be equal to the number of receivers of some power of two. And actually, this is the criterion. So you can, if you have this condition that the power of, for example, what can we do? Let's just uh, consider two arrays, sends of size like 31 and receives of size 31. And if delta AI is 2 to the power of B minus 2 to the power of L, this means that this person should send 2 to the power of B and receive 2 to the power of L. And let us increment sends B and decrement receives. Oh, not increment, de increment receives uh, also B, or oh, L. We do these two things for <coughs> each number. So I claim that in the end, if this is possible, if uh, this rearrangement uh, re is possible, then for each i, sends i should be equal to receives i. If it is not, then you just cannot put them into cycles because, because in each cycle, the number of times that some power of 2 is sent equals the number of times that some the same power of 2 is received. So they should be equal. I claim that if <coughs> all these equalities hold, then actually you can reconstruct the whole thing. How do you do that? Uh, for example, SI equals RI. Let's just divide them into pairs. Yeah. So for example, this is the set of sends Three, and there are four people who will send uh, 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. And there are exactly four people which will receive 8. Let's just divide them into pairs any possible way. Totally any possible way. So after that, we will get a permutation. And this permutation <coughs> will be correct. There are still two things that uh, needed to be discussed. The first thing is people which have B equals L. So their balance is zero. After you have done everything else, you can easily uh, plug these people into some cycles. For example, you have some cycle. And there is a segment where some person sends two to the power of B to someone else. Uh, you can fix this cycle so that this happens, the same things happens, but indirectly. Instead of this, this p person sends 2 to the power of b to some vertex of these vertices. So uh, let these vertices, let's call them balanced. Let's, for example, assume that there are five balanced vertices. We can just uh, put them into a line and just each of them sends 2 to the power of b to the next one. This will be quite balanced. And the last one sends 2 to the power of b to this person. There is a special case when there are just no such cycles, so we have nowhere to plug these people in. In this case, if all people are already with correct number of candies, we can just put them into one single cycle and each person sends one candy to the next one. So we can always divide them into cycles. The second issue <coughs> is that according to the statement, you also needed to bother about the non-negativity. So consider the following example. There is a 2 here, for example, and 4 here. 
and they need to, to get three. And the algorithm is as follows. This person sends here 16 candies. And this person sends here 17 candies. Let's perform these two operations. First of all, this person sends 16 candies to here. So now this person has minus 14 and this person has 20. And after that, this person sends 17 here and we get 3 and 3. This looks nice, but the problem is at some point we got a person which has negative number of candies and this is unacceptable. And in this very configuration, it is impossible to arrange them in such order so that each at each moment all people have no negative number of candies. <clears throat> but this is not a real example because here we have 17. So the question is, if all the sent quantities are powers of 2, is it always possible to start from some person such that each next person still has no negative values. The answer is yes. And this is the fact that they couldn't prove during the contest. I struggled. And it is, I think, in the tutorial. So if you divided <coughs> everything in the cycles as I proposed, then actually it will work. In any cycle, you just need one person. Yeah, for, so for example, AI. Uh, and he, this person gets 2 to the power of P and he sends 2 to the power of Q. Actually, if you have at least one such person that AI is at least 2 to the power of Q, then you won. Because you can start the cycle from this person. This person sets 2 to the power of Q to the next person. Then this person has a lot of candies. Really a lot. And if they send the needed amount of candies, they will uh, have the remaining M candies. And it is, of course, non-negative number because M is not negative. So after the very first person, we do not bother about non-negativity because it is implied by the fact that they will get just M candies. Yeah. So if you firstly have some minus and then some plus, then you need to bother about non-negativity at this point. But if you first of all get plus and then minus, then there is no way to uh, be worried because the only possible moment of non-negativity would be here, but here we have M by the definition. So the only question is, if all arrows have powers of two, is it a possible point to start the cycle? The answer is yes, but I don't know, do not know why. And I conceded it and didn't prove it. So this was the problem D1. <coughs> and there is also problem D2. And the only difference is that you do this no more than once. And each person gets no more than one power of two. This is actually the same, but instead of cycles, you get several uh, chains. So these are some chains. What can we do about it? So if you have a number where delta AI is zero, then nothing changed. Actually, nothing changed because you can still either plug it into some chain or cycle, actually uh, chains, but you can, uh, the closed chains are allowed. So cycles are out. So you can just, it is even easier now because you can just not touch this Delta AI. It doesn't change anything. And if you have some number, which is in binary, several ones and several zeros, and there are at least two ones, then all uh, totally all the same is true that the only way to express it as the difference of two powers of two is this power of two 
minus this power of 2. And you cannot express it as 1 power of 2 because it isn't. But there is a problem with numbers. Oh, sorry. It should be 2 here. The only problem is with powers of 2, which are in binary 1, 1 and several zeros. Yeah, because if you have a number like 2 to the power of a, there are two ways to express it. It is either 2 to the power of a, or this is 2 to the power of a plus 1 minus 2 to the power of a. So this can be either a middle of some chain in which you got 2 to the power of a and you sent 2 to the power of a plus 1, or it can be a beginning of chain in which you simply send 2 to the power of a. And we cannot uh, discriminate between these two cases in the beginning. What we can do is we can assume for now that this is this case. Yeah, so we still have this sends and receives. But we also store a special value. So if big minus little is 1, and this means that uh, the difference is the power of 2. Then we can also, for example, for 2 to the a, which is 2 to the power of a plus 1 minus 2 to the a, we added 1 to sends a plus 1. <coughs> Let's also make some array which is called something like positive fix. of a plus 1 and we in increment it. What it means is it's, it is said there is some cases, there are some cases when we added 1 to a plus 1 when instead we could well as well add 1 to power 2 to the 8th power. So there is one case where we can change this, replace this with this. And we just have a counter which is called positive fix. And the same goes with minus 2 to the a, which is equal to 2 to the a minus 2 to the a plus 1. In this case, we added receives a plus 1, and we can also increment some value called negative fix. And this means we subtracted 2 to the power a plus 1, maybe one extra time. And instead we could do this. Okay. So, <clears throat> what now? In the end, we just need to do the regular cycle. But before that, we wrote something like this. So, if s i is not equal uh, okay let me write it fully sense i if it is not equal to receives then a return false yeah because it is impossible but now we need to make some fixes. Actually, maybe sense is greater than receives. But this is not the end of the world. Actually, maybe sense i is greater than receives i only because we did some extra redundant increments to this array sense. And the number of such redundant actions is stored in positive fix. So what we can do is we can ask, is it true that positive fix is at least the difference between sends and receives? So if it is true, then everything is fine. We just need to undo 
this number of operations. For example, we can say that So what do we do? Let's uh, have some number f, which is the number of operations that are needed to be fixed. Int f equals sends i minus receives i. So first of all, we need to subtract sends i, subtract f from it. Yeah, because we undo operations during which we incremented sends of AI. Also, during these operations, we incremented receives A. Instead of that, we need to increment sends A. Yeah, because instead of this subtraction, we need to make this addition. So actually, here we say that <clears throat> receives i also minus equals f and instead of that sends sorry i minus first sends i minus first plus equals f and something similar in the case of sends i is less than the receives i but in in that case you need to check with negative fix So actually the solution is same as in the previous problem, but you also keep track of how many operations you can undo. Yeah? Every time that you used these two powers of two instead of this one, it is an operation and it sometimes may, must be undone because you have too many or too little or, or too few number of uh, big powers and you need to convert them into smaller powers. Hope it was understandable. Thank you for watching.